Welcome to the Global Connection, a Tel Aviv University podcast. Journey with us as we discover how TAU's academic community and friends are engaging with and helping to shape this ever-changing world. Hi, everyone. I'm Jackie Gorin, the head of the Sofer Global MBA program at Tel Aviv University. And today I'm here with Nimrod Cohen, who is the managing partner at Tau Ventures. He actually was in this podcast before. Uh, Tau Ventures is the first university-based venture capital fund in Israel. Uh, and I wanted to invite Nimrod to join me for this podcast episode of The Global Connection to discuss uh, an important issue, Uh, which is the state of Israel high-tech and startup industry since October 7th. Uh, the whole of Israel right now continues to grapple uh, with the after effect of October 7th. I definitely feel, feel it every day, uh, as well as with the Israeli-Hamas war uh, that we are still uh, experiencing. And the high-tech and startup community is no exception. Given Nimrod work very closely with many startups, Uh, across Israel, I figured he would be a great person uh, to discuss how exactly Startup Nation is managing these days and the way the companies in Israel have adapted and pivoted since October 7th. So Nimrod, I think maybe to open with an open question, you know, describe to me How you experience October 7th and I guess maybe the first couple of days which you remember I guess a day by day so I mean from the perspective of managing you know venture capital fund in Israel yeah well first great to be here again and thank you for uh, hosting me um, I guess on a personal level like like all of us I think uh, I was in shock. You know, I mean, many mixed feelings of uh, shock, afraid, insecure, surprised, and so on and so on. I guess in the first couple of days, we all pretty much, uh, although we, we, we were not in, a, I would say, a survival mode, but we felt a bit like it. And we just want to stay at home with our families and see what's going on and understand, try to somehow understand what's going on. Now... Uh, I have the responsibility of, uh, as the managing partner at our ventures, not only to think about myself, obviously. So uh, even after a couple of hours, a couple of days, uh, we realize, okay, we need uh, uh, to, to take responsibility of our business, of our fund, and uh, to see how we can help uh, any of our startups and uh, the ecosystem in general. By the way, uh, one part of our team, Bar, she... Uh, from October 7th, after two hours or so, she, she's on reserve until now, mm. uh, which is crazy when you think about it. As, and one of my responsibilities... She's as, a woman. She's a woman, yeah. Just to mention to people, yeah, 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 yeah. Know what bar means. It's exactly. Name. For me, it's, no, uh, it's not an issue, but I guess for most people, it's... Uh, yes. Yeah. So we're really proud of her, and uh, uh, we try to do everything we can in order to support her and to give her the feeling that there is nothing she needs to uh, take care of other than herself and Israel and, and forget about uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, work and we, we got it covered. So this is one aspect, for example. Other than that, so we started as a team, as myself, we started to uh, talk to our founders and, you know, first on a personal level, again, I mean, it's all start with, uh, you know, a uh, human being mm -hmm. at, the, at the end of the day. Leave the business aside, we'll get to that. So just to see how they handle, if they need any help, Uh, mental help, just some hands, or whatever it is they need. Um, and then after a couple of days, uh, we did several of activities. Uh, we had this group session, we had one-on-ones. We first wanted to understand what is their main challenges now. Mm -hmm. And we realized, uh, again, there are some personal, uh, obviously, uh, issues that they, uh, they all Uh, try to uh, understand and solve. There are issues like, okay, I have less working hands now. Some companies, 30, 40, 50% of their uh, uh, people went to the army. That 30% of the people went to the army. 30%, that's the average. Amazing, amazing figure. Yeah, so that's the average. So it means that some of the companies lost 50% of wow. their... Uh, uh, And uh, they try to understand, okay, what is it that we can do? Uh, because at the end of the day, we need to deliver. You know, we have customers, we have 
responsibilities we somehow need to uh, deliver. Secondly, uh, we need money, obviously. I mean, keep in mind that we all got into October 7th in a tough situation. There was an economic crisis, the political crisis here in Israel. It was not like a... Uh, Every day. Uh, yeah, it was not like the best situation. I remember talking to VCs last year before the war, and they were all anticipating that 2024 will be like the year yeah. that we will get out of the crisis that we were experiencing, the entire world after Corona, right. but especially Israel. Yeah, we'll get to that. I'm super optimistic, but we'll get to that. Okay, but, I'm happy to hear that we are go going somewhere. Yeah, 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 optimistic. absolutely, absolutely. But... Uh, uh, so we, we try to realize, okay, what is it that you need help with? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how to help you yet, but what is it that you need to, uh, some help with? So after we gather some answers from our portfolio companies, uh, we created some tools for them. I mean, uh, some with uh, connecting them to the relevant professionals to help them with that, some with uh, other investors, some with uh, whatever it is they need. Uh, we try to uh, help them with some solutions, group uh, type of solutions one-on-one, -on -one, uh, whatever it is they need. And uh, it pretty much continue, continues until, until now, I now. guess. Yeah, but uh, I think the main concern now looking back, the main concern or the main risk on the Israeli high-tech ecosystem was, can we still deliver? Mm -hmm. Because obviously Israel is a bit high risk type of investment, right? Because every couple of years or year or whatever it is, we have this, I don't know how to call it, we have missiles basically, which is crazy when you think about it, but Although it's... Although maybe it's part of the, you know, special sauce that I'm makes sure. it successful. I'm sure, but it's there, hard there, to say that, but... I'm sure, but there is a risk factor with that. Absolutely. But the fact is that in the last couple of years or so, we still delivered. I mean, companies sold their services worldwide, they still delivered, they went to reserve, they still delivered. And now it was a different situation because so many people uh, um, already pretty much disappeared. The main risk was, can the Israeli high tech still deliver, mm -hmm. as I see it? And, and now I have to say that I think the Israeli high tech uh, ecosystem will or already somehow in the process of uh, getting out stronger than before. Because although we are or were in a crazy situation that there is no other startup ecosystem worldwide that pretty much uh, had those challenges that we do have, I think that we delivered. Companies delivered their product to their customers, uh, somehow achieved their milestones or adapt to the new situation. And that's part of our uniqueness. So you're I think. saying it's agility at its totally. highest uh, totally. level. And if... After what's going on now, we're still there and we're still deliver and we are still uh, uh, doing uh, crazy things. I think that it gives the confidence, uh, maybe not for the short term because it's a mess. It's still a mess here, but uh, looking for the uh, a bit later, I think uh, uh, that's uh, we, we'll we'll get out stronger than uh, than before. So I have. A couple of qu uh, many questions. I'll start. Okay. I, okay. So one of them, you talked a lot about your relationship with the uh, ventures and the entrepreneurs, and I'm sure that the steps that you took actually make made you closer with them. And I can see how that can, you know, build relationship to the future and make things better. How was it with your investors? So uh, at the end of the day, I think if 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 someone behaves in a specific way with someone, there's a good chance that's the type of of uh, uh, people or human being they are. And it's not like this is how they act or behave with someone and they're behaving totally differently with others. Mm -hmm. Meaning that uh, the relationships that we have with our entrepreneurs and with our colleagues, this is, this is the type of people that we are. This is the type of fund that we created. Uh, that uh, we want to work with people that uh, we trust, they trust us, we have great relationships. It's not founder-investor uh, relationships. It's not uh, um, corporate uh, VC relationships. Mm -hmm. It's much more than that. And we uh, that's how we pretty much chose our LPs, and they chose us. Interesting. I mean, that's the type of relationships that we have. So hours or days after October 7th, we got tons of emails, phone calls, 
guys, how are you? Do you need any help? Don't worry about anything. Just take care of yourself and your families and we're proud of you and we are sorry that we are not there to support you. Anything you need from us, just let us know and so on and so on. And very quickly we felt that, okay, we want to uh, um, somehow uh, expose them to what's going on because at the end of the day, obviously they're super nice, they're super supportive, but it's a business at the end of the day. Yeah. They gave us money. We need to create the best return that we can. Absolutely. So uh, after a couple of days, we sent them a report about everything that's going on. And then a couple of weeks uh, uh, later, we sent another report. And uh, there are some that want to uh, uh, get more updates. There are some that they are, I don't know, they don't, they don't really into getting too many reports. They, it's not that the others are not trusting us, but it's a different approach, I would say. Um, so uh, I have to say that we're super proud of our LPs. I'm and, sure they're uh, super proud of you. Um, um, I hope so. <laughs> we're doing our best we can, but that's uh, we, that's the feeling that we get. So you're saying that you had you set the ground of the relationship long before the war, and now it totally just, you know, same with the founders, paid, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, And maybe the fact that your university fund uh, also from the beginning created a kind kind of an impact also in the investments here. It's not just about money, although money is the the main thing. But uh, I, I'm I keep saying that money at the end of the day it's a commodity. I mean, I that's not the issue. I mean, money is a commodity. You can't be a great investor because you have money and you can't be a great entrepreneur because you raise tons of money. I mean, that's just a commodity. It's just a tool. And uh, it's much more than that. And uh, and I think that's the uniqueness that we pretty much created here around the Tao Ventures, you know, with everything other than just money because many others have money as well. Amazing. Another question. I don't know if it relevant yet but still I guess many of your companies at least the ones that are already selling are you know facing abroad not not the Israeli market right. as all the startups here in Israel most of them uh, so we know that the, one of the after effects of October 7th were uh, not just sympathy to Israel but also a lot of anti-semitism and criticism mm -hmm. uh, so did you experience that I mean with your companies or not yet? Um, not at all. When you think about it, some of our companies actually put aside all the bad things around what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, for their business, it created a huge opportunity. opportunity. I mean, Extend, for example, one of our companies, mm -hmm. they had uh, about 25 million shekels new agreements in the last three months. Wow. Uh, which, what do they do? They have uh, this crazy technology with uh, drones. Okay. And uh, actually, they save lives uh, as we speak in Gaza. And uh, that makes us even more proud than the fact that they have uh, uh, a lot of uh, new agreements and so on. I mean, uh, and they felt the same. So some of our portfolio companies, it created great opportunities. Um, some of our portfolio companies, obviously, it created some challenges, but... I'm not aware of any situation where because it's an Israeli company, because uh, uh, anything, it's at least that, not that we know of. I mean, theoretically, um, maybe there are some, I don't know, individuals or companies that, I don't know, decided not to buy or not to continue or whatever it is. I'm not sure. I don't think so, but I'm not sure. But it's not something that uh, is out there. Aware of. No. Okay. In, we know that Israel is an ecosystem, so you know it happened not just to your venture or to your portfolio companies, but to ma many ventures and portfolio companies. Is there a, a help or any project that you're aware of that the Israeli government did or the Innovation Authority did or anything like that uh, that's worth mentioning that was helpful in these times? Totally. You know, we are... In Israel and in general, we usually we like to uh, you know uh, uh, say bad things about governments and so on. I that's mean, the uh, fun. that's the whole <laughs> fun, and most of the time it's true. But I have to say now that uh, the innovation authority here in Israel, it's as close as it gets to the private sector, mm -hmm. and the fact that they react so quickly and suggests some uh, support and grants and uh, new programs. Uh, of hundreds of millions uh, to support the Israeli startup ecosystem. I think uh, that's 
that's something very unique and uh, I'm super proud to be uh, uh, part of this ecosystem and part of this country in this uh, situation and uh, some of our companies uh, got great grants from the Innovation Authority and I know about other uh, startups not from our portfolio I mean there are hundreds of Israeli startups that got uh, really yeah, great I know. money they from, announced uh, the very yeah, yeah and it's happening program. it's not just an announcement like two uh, weeks after it started yeah, if I'm yeah, not yeah, mistaken yeah, yeah. totally totally unbelievable yeah so you know on a personal level again I mean now when you have like three months perspective into the event do you know what will be the the tips that you will give to yourself three months ago or God forbid that somebody who is about to go through this in the future you know actually you experience crisis management in a venture fund and You know, I'm talking to uh, our founders. Uh, we had this small event that we uh, had a toast. Uh, it was like a month ago, and I was like, maybe you guys are not aware of, but taking, I don't know, the last four or five or three years. I mean, so we had uh, COVID. We had uh, Ukraine, Russia. We had uh, economic crisis. We had the local politics issues. Now we had a war. I mean... That's not something new for us here in Israel. And uh, obviously now it's totally crazy effect now, right? It's not like a, uh, it's maybe the, uh, the largest effect that we all as human beings uh, had in the last, uh, I don't know, since the beginning since of Israel. Since I was born. Pretty much. I, yeah. I, I can say testify for myself. Totally, totally. <laughs> And I was born a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And this is, this is something that... We never experienced so it's not like you have a booklet that you can open and see what's uh, to do I think that's uh, having around you the right team and having around you the right people and things will be okay I mean you can't expect everything you can't prepared to any situation actually you're not supposed to be prepared to extreme situations I mean uh, you, you I mean but you need to have the right people and uh, the right platform and the right uh, uh, ecosystem around you and then you whatever it is that's going to happen you, you'll know how to solve it and how to uh, I totally navigate. agree with you you know I'm managing the sofa global MBA mm-hmm. and on uh, October 11th we were supposed to start our orientation week with right. students coming from all over the world to Israel perfect timing perfect timing <laughs> Uh, you know in retrospect now we have 25 students that stay with us or 90 of them are in Israel uh, it's like one of the best cohorts we ever had all of them are wow. brave and unique and yeah. unbelievable uh, and I also remember every hour every minute of the first fr- of few days and I totally agree with you that it's all about the team and the platform and after that I thought about writing maybe a case study about it and I went to read the textbooks and actually without knowing the textbooks actually what we did was what the textbooks recommend yeah, so yeah, I yeah. totally agree with you that if you have a good team you will manage to work it out yeah 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 and what about the the entrepreneurs themselves I mean I remember I was managing once the A corporate VC during crisis right. and I remember that these hard times sometimes man you, ha- you you learn who are the good entrepreneurs the resilient ones and right. who are the ones that you know maybe I'm not going to invest in yeah. in the future so did you experience something similar to that yeah again remember I wrote we have this whatsapp <laughs> uh, uh, group of our portfolio uh, founders and I wrote them after like two weeks or so that uh, maybe they are not aware of the fact that mm-hmm. These days they are becoming better managers, better entrepreneurs, better human beings and they're going through crazy situation with crazy challenges that no one in the world ever faced. And uh, if they're gonna get through this situation and it's not going to be easy to go through this situation, but if they're gonna do it, there's a very good chance that their companies going to be, super unique and super successful uh, not all of them going to uh, cross that bridge not just because the war again economic crisis and everything's going on and most startups are not successful at the end of the day which is totally fine but uh, living through this situation and those challenges are gonna make you a better entrepreneur if not with that specific venture so with the next one um, unlike you know, 
entrepreneurs that only experienced, let's say they started their company like seven years ago and they sold it like two years ago, for them being an entrepreneur, well, that's fun. Piece of cake. Piece of cake, <laughs> fun. I mean, yeah. now obviously they had some challenges, but not anything close to what uh, uh, we have in right now. So uh, trying to look at it as in, in, in a positive uh, way, I think that uh, it's going to make us better and stronger. Can you give an example? I mean, you said before that uh, the end of this conversation is going to be a happy end. Yeah. And that your prospect for the future is positive. So Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to share it with sure. uh, a, a, a everywhere uh, that they're willing to hear me. Because, uh, again, for the short term, I mean, we're in deep shit. Sorry about that. But, I mean, no one knows how it it's going to end. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows how it's going to end. No one knows it's going to end in a week from now, six months from now. I have no idea. I I'm, I'm really have no idea. But it's going to end in a certain point. Again, in a month from now, six months from now, whatever it is. Once it's going to end, we'll be Israel will be a safer place than three months ago. For sure. Maybe a lot, maybe a little, but it will be a safer place. I think the people that about three months ago we had, I would say, uh, uh, inner crisis or the people pretty much, the Israeli people were not in a peace with each other. I think we are in a much, much, much better place. I think we'll have a new government that's going to be more balanced and more agreed and uh, I would say maybe more normal in a way. And if you look at the Arab countries like uh, Saudi Arabia and some others, they're as close as they can to say, kick them, to kick their ass. <laughs> they're as close as they can to say that. And you see Jewish from all over the world already started to make Aliyah. And I think we're going to have tons of them coming to Israel. And I hear about many talented people from the private sector announcing, I'm going to the public sector. I want... To make a change so in a in a point from i don't know a year from now two years from now maybe three years from now i'm pretty sure that we'll live in a safer place united people here uh peace agreement with saudi arabia many new olim Hadashim, and that sounds good i guess i mean yeah you, sign you, me in exactly yeah <laughs> i mean I, i i really think that at least most of it going to happen i mean we have no choice yeah I that's think the only being way optimistic that's... is something that we cannot afford not being yeah yeah okay and so before we you know finish this and i do want to finish in a you know positive positive uh mode right uh, you know any small story or you know personal st something that you want to share that you went through during these three months as managing a fund or not managing a fund that actually represent for you this this time uh, I think what really affected me and I uh, really recommended it to our founders and team and so on you know in the when you're going through a difficult time I mean the easiest or maybe your first instinct is to lay back and And, and and I don't know for me the first week I was on my couch watching terrible videos and get uh, 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 terrible news and I was I was pretty much uh, freezed and once I started to do stuff you know whatever it is just to be active just to try to help in any way I can I mean that pretty much gave me the energy to And uh, the maybe the a bit optimistic uh, uh, view. And I saw that with our companies as well, because mm -hmm. our CEOs and the founders, they were like, "Listen, what am I supposed to do with our employees? On the one hand, you want to let them stay at home with their families. I mean, that's the first instinct, obviously. But I'm not sure it's good for them. Forget about the company for a minute. I'm not sure it's good for them. I mean, I think it's pretty much with everyone. I mean, When you do something, when you talk to people, when you see people. Um, so if I'll try to somehow get to a conclusion is that we all get into different difficult situations and you can lay back and wait that something good is going to happen, and maybe it will. But try to take your uh, future or, or the way out of it with your own hands. 
and do whatever it is you can. Even if it sounds like a minor thing, it's going to help you get out of that uh, tough situation. And, uh, and usually it works. Usually it works. So, uh, I know. I, I hope it's like uh, ends our conversation with some... Uh, this is very, uh, very, very inspiring. Uh, and I also agree with it very much. And I'm happy that this conversation, you know, first of all, I'm happy that we did it now because I think sometimes you need a little bit of a perspective right. in order to evaluate what you went through. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that that perspective at this time is about, you know, all the good things that uh, we learned about ourselves and our investors and our ventures and our society in the last three months. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being able to look into the future and thinking that, you know, good stuff will, will happen in the future. So I think that that's a very good point to end this conversation and to thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And to, for inspiring me. And I hope <laughs> that you inspired, you know, the people that will listen to this podcast. Hope so. So, תודה רבה. תודה, תודה.